My initial denials of involvement made publicly and to the UCB were untruthful. My letter of the 11th of April was also untruthful in a number of respects, and so too was the subsequent press statement issued on my instructions. I misled the United Cricket Board of South Africa and members of the South African government and those who tried to defend me. I also withheld facts from my legal representatives. I was not honest and I apologize unreservedly. I've also decided to sever my connections with the game and will not again play cricket at representative level. Words cannot begin to describe the shame, humiliation and pain which I feel in the knowledge that I have inflicted this on others. To my wife, Bertha, family and teammates in particular, I apologize. The greatest honor which can be bestowed upon any cricketer is to lead his country's national side. I have failed in my moral and professional duties. Hopefully I can contribute some small measure of redress by placing before the Commission the information which follows in this statement. Until now, I have not named or implicated any other person, and I fear that the revelations in this statement create serious implications for my personal safety. I have already received death threats. I wish to disclose all the information I have, and in the emotional state in which I find myself, I have dredged my memory as best I can in order to place the facts before this Commission. Since the first revelations made in the Indian press, and in particular the morning of April the 11th of this year, I have known that my days as a cricketer are over. There were, however, others, namely Herschel Gibbs, Peter Stratum and Henry Williams, who have their playing careers before them and whose futures have been imperiled by my inexcusable actions. And travel allowances for what proved to be an aborted benefit to her. Hamid and Sanjay indicated that Sanjay wanted me to supply them with information, but did not specify what this information would be. They also said that I could make a lot of money if we would lose a match. I said that I was not prepared to do it unless we were sure of a place in the final of the triangular series. I was spinning them along as I do not think that I had any real intention of throwing a match. Sanjay handed me a cell phone box containing US dollars in case I changed my mind. I did not count the money, which was kept in a filing cabinet at home together with my prize money from the World Cup, the Kenya tour, and leftover sustenance allowances. Sanjay phoned me and urged me to go ahead with fixing the match, and I gave in. I told him that I would go ahead. I was required to ensure that Gibbs would score less than 20 runs, that Williams would bowl poorly and go for more than 50 runs during his 10 overs, and that the total score should be no more than 270 runs. I was to be paid for doing this. I spoke to Herschel Gibbs and Henry Williams as described by them in their testimony. I hope that my experience will serve as a lesson to all other cricket players and administrators. My only consolation is the knowledge that, despite my inexcusable behavior, South Africa has in fact never thrown or fixed a match. We ask at this stage that Mr. Cronier stand down under his cross-examination. Mr. Cronier, Mr. Cronier, you can leave now and then remain within the precincts of the building of the